So this is week four of Pathic Lecture 56, which is healthy and unhealthy motives in desire. We're not saying they're unhealthy desires per se, but they're unhealthy motives in desire. And so the lecture in the four sections has talked about various kinds of resistance and ways to see it, address it, identify it, discern it. And this week, uh, the guide suggests that there are misconceptions about the process of self-search. Basically, what he says is it's easier than you think. So the idea is if these, if this resistance is in my unconscious, I'll have to figure out what my unconscious is, and that's almost impossible. And the guide says, no, that that that's that's not what you have to do. All you have to do is observe. So what happens before that is what we looked at last week. We need to have the attitude that we want to see it in the first place. This section is about it's already there. So the minute your attitude changes and you want to see something, you will begin to see aspects. You will begin to see clues. It's laying around on the surface. Now, that's not the whole story. There's more to it. But as you move and address certain things, you will then be more aware of deeper meanings and deeper connections to that. So it's a process. You don't get everything in a neat tied package all at once. That's not the way it works. And so what he says is don't dig, observe. He also suggests that you take things one step at a time. There's a positive and a negative uh, in these motives uh, for that are buried within our desires. That's bad phrasing, I apologize. But there are positive and negatives and they're interlaced, they're intermixed. So when you say one step at a time, that always sounds like good advice, except that we probably feel that we're late in the discovery process. And so there's an urgency, there's a fear and an urgency, and we want to get it over with, and we want to do it now, and we want to, in effect, erase the evidence of our wrongdoing, the evidence of our having ignored things for a period of time. And that's the unhealthy part of the motives to clean up our stuff. Keep in mind the healthy part, which is, of course, you want to address it. But that haste, let's use some cliches here, haste makes waste. That trying to rush will lead you into feelings of overwhelm. It'll lead you into feel, you'll fail, and then you'll blame yourself for the failure, and that'll be a little eddy or vicious circle. So the one step at a time is very difficult. It's something you have to get used to. Uh, the phrase I use is, you move the mountain one pebble at a time. So to some extent, there needs to be a mindset where you are saying, I'm moving pebbles. I understand that perhaps I can move more later. Perhaps I'm not doing as much as I could. But if I continue, if I get in the habit, then I will become more willing. I will become used to the work level. I will become more skillful in the work. And I may be able to carry two or three pebbles at a time instead of one. I'm always reminded of when I had household and kids and family and the house is a mess. And on the weekend, I'd turn around and look at a room and say, okay, I have to clean this. And it's overwhelming. So I, I think I'm not the only one who does this. This is just a reminder. So I would walk through and I would pick up all the glasses and dishes then I would go through and I would pick up all the dirty laundry or leftover pieces of clothing, sort those out to clean and dirty, put them in the respective rooms. Then I would go through and I would put the things that belong in the room back where they belonged. So that if I got interrupted, at least a few of those, I'm going to call them layers, at least a few layers got done. Now, the process continues. Organic family life uh, is messy. But at least I got a few layers done. Uh, if you simply look at the whole thing, become overwhelmed, and try to do everything at once, very commonly, nothing gets done. 
because in a feeling of overwhelm, you're going to wind up being very vulnerable to distraction. So the one step at a time, divide and conquer. Take one aspect of the work and work on that. Take one skill set at a time, even if it's a different skill every day, vary it up. That's fine. But so that you're not overwhelmed. And then add as you feel able to. During this month, I've also been introducing some of the spiritual laws. Now, the spiritual laws in Pathwork are interesting because they are embodied in a document, Pathwork Lecture 171. But if you read the small print up in the upper left-hand corner, it says presented by the helpership training class or something to that effect. It's not a guide lecture. It was presented by the people that the guide and Ava were training to be helpers within the community. Uh, so people like to quantify, people like lists. Uh, and I uh, that's my uh, impression of why the guide did not give a lecture called Spiritual Laws, but people did. Uh, so I've been introducing some of those because they are handy. They are, they are, simpler phrases that allow you to grab a big idea and apply it just remembering the phrase. Uh, one of those is law of lack of awareness. And where that relates to this is that if you have a false belief or a misconception or a distortion about something, basically there's a negativity of some sort. It will probably bloom more in one aspect of life rather than all of them. But you cannot keep it contained. The law of lack of awareness means that in, if you're not aware of what's going on in one aspect of your life, it will infect, spread to, move into the other aspects of your life. So sometimes we think in terms of my ethics at work, are different from my ethics at home, and I can keep those two separate. There is some truth to that. But if you're not ethical at work, and yet you want to be ethical at home, these two are not going to stay separate. The negative is they won't stay separate. So you can't, it's a game you can't play. The positive is that if you're unconscious that you've made this discernment, this uh, split in you, it won't stay split. Um, another one is the law of consciousness reflects experience, meaning that if I approach something with an attitude of fear, then I will, I will find things that are fearful. It will bleed over. Like attracts light. Like. So if I open up a topic with enthusiasm and expectation that I can find something of value, there's a very good chance that I will find something of value. If I open a topic thinking this is going to take me a lot of time and I'm not going to get much out of it, there's a very good chance I won't get much out of it. That our attitude going in is going to be reflected in what we carry out of it. And that's why attitude in Pathwork is so important. Um, another, <clears throat> another aspect is that is about negative recognition. And that means that we need to notice reactions that discourage further exploration. So this is where you have to be able to notice that you're um, discouraging yourself by how you describe something. That you're discouraging yourself by building up all these false problems before you even start a topic. And so, of course, you're going to find nothing but problems. So these are all some of the aspects from other lectures that I bring in to try to illustrate the one, because all the lectures are holographic, meaning that once you know a concept from one lecture or a concept, you can see it in others. Now, you will see what you want to see. Uh, on the positive side, you will see what you need to see. But you can notice these different concepts in all the different lectures. So it doesn't matter what lecture you decide to read or that's your favorite or that you're most, <coughs> sorry, 
doesn't matter which lecture is your favorite or that you're most entranced by. Once you really get that concept, you will be able to see that concept in every other lecture that you read. And so the ability to see and be aware builds. Same thing happens in your life, that once you go in with a willing attitude to see things, you begin to see things far more easily. It's not as hard as we make it out to be. So that's a short summary of week four. Uh, thanks for listening.